everyone, it's Dr. Sue Cancervet. Thanks so much for watching. This video is gonna be all about steroids and cancers. I get so many questions about what cancer should we be using steroids to treat, and why do we use steroids to treat some cancers? So the most common thing that we use is prednisone and prednisolone in kitties, and I'll go into that in this video. And we'll be talking about lymphoma, which is the most common cancer that we use it for, and definitely why you don't wanna start steroids right away. And what are some other cancers, like mast cell tumors? So we're gonna dive into it, we'll talk about side effects, because there definitely are some side effects, especially with chronic use. And there are some medications you don't wanna use with steroids. So that's it, that's what we'll be talking. Let's get into it. What are the top things you you need to know about steroids and cancer patients. Glucocorticoids, which are steroids, have been used to attempt to treat practically every malady that afflicts man or animal. But there's really four main uses for prednisone and prednisolone. And again, we're gonna circle back to the difference for that. So four main categories. So the first one is gonna be replacement and supplementation for adrenal glands when the adrenal glands are not making the steroids. So the adrenal glands make lots of different hormones and that's gonna be one of them. Second one, as I already mentioned, is anti-inflammatory. So steroids are a great anti-inflammatory. They're not perfect because they do have their side effects, but again, they're often used as an anti-inflammatory agent. Um, immunosuppressive, so higher doses of steroids can suppress the immune system. So they're often used in patients with autoimmune or um, immune-mediated diseases. So that's another common use for them. And then the other one is actually as what is called an anti-neoplastic agent. So where the steroids actually have an effect to kill the cancer cells. And the most common one is lymphoma. And people are often surprised to learn that for lymphoma, prednisone actually kills the cancer cells. So we're not using it as an anti-inflammatory like we will in some other cancers. We're actually using it to kill the cancer cells just as uh, chemotherapy. But we'll learn that it doesn't you know, typically last as long as chemotherapy and that's why it's not as effective as chemotherapy. So those are the, the main uses that we use in veterinary medicine. We're gonna focus for this video on how we use it in cancer patients and really most uh, specifically on lymphoma is what we're probably gonna spend the most time on it. You know, a couple of really important things that we're taught as veterinarians and that I think are really important if you're watching this as a pet owner, a pet owner is steroids can really mask the disease. What do I mean by that? They can make it difficult to diagnose the disease. You try not to use them until you have a diagnosis. And lymphoma is one of the most, you know, screaming examples of that because it will actually start to treat the cancer and make it harder to make a diagnosis after. So that is a good example of where you want to hold off on using steroids until you've made your diagnosis. And there's another reason that we'll circle back to why that is so important with lymphoma patients as well. And again, you really want to make a specific diagnosis as well. Um, you want to determine you know, what the course of treatment is going to be before you add your steroids. Steroids, um, and determine what the endpoint of that is. The other thing that's really important is as a veterinarian, we is, there are gonna be times where steroids are gonna be not appropriate for the patient, as we say, contraindicated. So sometimes in a sudden infection, you're not gonna to wanna to do it because it can make the infection worse or diabetics. Uh, it can actually make them insulin resistant and you know make it harder to regulate their, their diabetes. So there are gonna be times where steroids are not gonna be the right thing for a patient. Um, and there are gonna be complicated cases where there's gonna be you know pros and cons and you're gonna talk to your cancer specialist or an internist about balancing the things out. So that is the overall view. So why do we use steroids in veterinary medicine? Now let's think about how we use it in some of the cancer patients. So I think, you know, the number one thing that I want you to know about steroids in cancer patients is when we use it the most, and that is going to be lymphoma in both dogs and cats. And again, as I mentioned in the introduction, the reason we're using prednisone in lymphoma patients is that it actually kills the cancer cells. So it's not for the inflammatory effects, it's for that anti-cancer effect. It will actually kill lymphoma cells. That sounds great, right? Yes, you know, you wanna get your pet on, on prednisone as quickly as possible. No 
No, you don't. Okay, there's two main reasons that I think about why, if, especially if you have a dog, you would not want to get your pet, you know, so you go in and your dog has big lymph nodes. You can definitely watch the other lymphoma videos. I have lots of other videos um, in the lymphoma playlist, but you know, the most common symptom is your dog has big lymph nodes and your vet's going to tell you this is most likely lymphoma. And you're going to wonder why are you not going home with prednisone? Because they're going to aspirate the lymph nodes and send them off to the lab. So you would think, well, give me my prednisone. I want to start killing those cancer cells right away. But you need to wait for the cytology to come back from your veterinarian uh, and confirm the diagnosis because there's going to be additional tests that we're most likely going to need to do. And if you're killing those cancer cells, those other tests are not going to be accurate. And if you watch my other video, one of the most important tests is something called phenotype, where we figure out if it has B versus T cell. B is the more responsive, so it's the better type of lymphoma. If your dog's on PRED and we're killing those cancer cells, you're most likely not going to be able to get a good diagnosis with flow cytometry or one of the other tests to determine B versus T. So it's gonna make getting those accurate tests to figure out more details, what's called the staging of your pet's lymphoma, more difficult to do, so it's gonna be less accurate. So that's one really important reason to hold off on the prednisone. The other really important reason to hold off on prednisone for dogs with lymphoma is prednisone prior to chemotherapy makes the chemo less effective. So they will not respond as well. So it's unlikely that one or two days of steroids is going to cause this what's called multi-drug resistance. We don't know how long they need to be on steroids, probably about a week or two, but it's really important. I've had pets that have come, you know, that have been on steroids for a month, three weeks, and that makes me really, really concerned that they're not gonna, you know, have that good response. And, you know, it's hard to treat cancer and we need to have every advantage that we can. So we don't wanna start dogs on prednisone until I have all of my testing done, my blood work, potentially aspirates, phenotyping, chest x-rays, uh, if needed, ultrasound. People often say, well, steroids are great because they're gonna increase the appetite and we'll talk about that in side effects and that pets not eating when they came in with lymphoma. Guys, there are plenty of other medications that we have now now that can help get that pet eating while we're waiting for the confirmation of lymphoma and waiting to see the oncologist or waiting to start chemotherapy. We have Serenia, we have Entice, we have Mirtazapine, and so we have other videos where you can go, I have other vlogs where you can go and find out about those other medications to stimulate the appetite and what to do if your pet's not eating. We're going to put the links below, but specifically we have vlog number 38, which talks about medications, and then vlog 68 and 69 are things that you can do uh, if your pet's not eating. Uh, medicines, uh, medications that you can get from your veterinarian, and also just some other things that you can do to get your pet to eat. And then also uh, vlog number 70 is how to pill your pet if you don't know how to do that. And that's okay, guys. Uh, I just want you, if you're getting medications prescribed, to get them in your pet. So that's really important. So Pred treats lymphoma. That's great. That's really, really good. It also has an anti-cancer effect. The other really common cancer that comes to mind is mast cell tumors. So there are other ones as well, uh, but those are the most common cancers. So those would be the ones that you would most likely go home with steroids. Again, whether it's lymphoma, mast cell tumor, or plasma cell tumor, multiple myeloma is another cancer that comes to mind where steroids has um, a good effect. The leukemias, the chronic lymphocytic leukemias, uh, low-grade lymphomas in cats will We'll talk about that. Uh, those would be other cancers where steroids uh, can have a good effect even alone. Not as good as with steroids, uh, but if you absolutely decide against chemotherapy, if it's not right for you and your family, you definitely want to use steroids. And But again, you want to make sure that you got that you know information. And the reason I harp on that, guys, is there are so many clients, I've been doing this for like 20 plus years, there are so many clients that initially say no to their veterinarian and then they go home and they think about it and they get some information. They come meet an oncologist like me and they learn about chemotherapy and how well tolerated it is. And we have another video about the myths and misconceptions about chemotherapy. And then they decide to treat with chemotherapy and they're so happy with how their pet does. And so... <clears throat> There are many people that really change their mind. It's I know it's shocking when your pet's diagnosed with cancer. I really, really do. But there are many people that change their mind. So I want you to give your pet the benefit of the doubt and not start steroids. But 
If you've learned all this information and you say, you know what, it's really not right for my family, whether it's due to scheduling, financers, or any of these other reasons, and you say, you know what, we thought about it, we waited, you know, we've decided that we don't want to do nothing, but we'd like to do something for our pet. So I really think if you're not going to do chemo, you should do steroids. Um, and so that would be a great reason to get steroids. And you're usually going to be on steroids lifelong, um, you know, until your pet's cancer progresses because the cancer, especially with lymphoma, typically will progress. Um, usually for dogs, about two to three months. Uh, cats, about the same. So they're going to be on steroids longer um, and they're going to stay on that medication uh, longer. So that's something important to know. So you definitely should get steroids uh, from your veterinarian once you've eliminated the option of doing chemotherapy. I would definitely like you to do steroids. So that would be a good thing to consider. Okay, so what are some things that you should know about if your pet is on steroids? Let's talk side effects because guys, PRED causes side effects for sure. So the main side effects are increased urination, increased drinking, uh, and increased appetite. So the increased appetite is often not a bad side effect if your pet hasn't been eating well. So again, I mentioned that earlier, that's one reason that vets and pet owners often want steroids when their pets aren't eating. But again, we have Serenia uh, for dogs and can be used for cats and Entice for dogs, which is a great appetite stimulant and Miritaz for cats, which is transdermal. So it can go in their ears. You don't even have to pill them. So we have other appetite stimulants for dogs and cats that can be used. But a good side effect of steroids is that it will increase the appetite. Um, there are some dogs that will become, um, we call them garbage divers. They just start, you know, they're so voracious when they're on the, the higher doses of steroids that they'll start going into garbage, jumping on, you know, counters, counter surfing and things like that because they're really, really hungry. The other thing, another side effect I mentioned is increased urination. So steroids cause the urine to be more dilute so the dog and cat is going to make more volume of urine so they're going to have more dilute urine and they're going to pee more larger amounts to compensate for that they're going to need to drink more so they don't get dehydrated so please fill up their water bowl as often as they need it you don't want to say oh they're urinating so much it's driving me crazy i'm just not going to fill the water bowl because you know what then they're going to get dehydrated if it's driving you crazy, what you need to do is call your veterinarian or your internist or your oncologist who prescribed it and say, you know, this the urination is making me crazy or they're having accidents throughout the night. Um, you know, can we talk about tapering the steroids? So that's what you would want to do. And that's another really important point if you're, especially dogs, if they're on steroids, we never stop cold turkey. We need to slowly taper them. What do I mean by that? We need to slowly lower the dose, usually at least a couple of days. So three days at minimum, and then three days when I, for my dogs on their lymphoma protocol, they're usually on a week, and then we lower for a week, lower for a week, and then lower for a week. If I need to get them off of it more quickly, we'll usually do three days, and then three days, then three days. Why do we need to taper? The adrenal glands, which make these steroids, they kind of go to sleep. They're resting and they're not, they haven't been making steroids because the body has been getting it from an outside source, the pill that you've been giving your pet. So you need to taper it so they wake up, they go up, oh, we, we got, you know, it's time to get to work and, and make some steroids on our own. So you got to get those adrenal gland, the factory pumping again. So again, you're going to want to taper that. So those are the main side effects. The other thing is it can be immunosuppressive. So it can lead to things like urinary tract infections and things like that. So Pokey, if you guys have watched any of my other videos, I've been treating for two and a half years almost for lymphoma. When she relapsed, she was on a protocol called COP and the P in the COP protocol is prednisone. And for the one year she was on prednisone every other day. And you know what? She got a bunch of urinary tract infections uh, throughout the year, and one of the reasons that we thought it was occurring was because of the steroid, which is it is immunosuppressive. So sometimes dogs will get skin infections, sometimes they will get um, urinary tract infections. So 
they're not, you know, it's not a benign medication. So a lot of people say, oh, you know, I don't want, I'd rather, you know, just be on steroids. But, you know, sometimes people hate the steroids more than they do chemotherapy. And actually, I just got a comment online where someone said, you know, the doxorubicin chemotherapy for her dog, uh, chemotherapy protocol was way better than the steroids. So there definitely are some side effects. Okay. Other things that I want you to think about is you never want to be giving steroids like prednisone with non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. So there's a lot of them in veterinary medicine. It's hard for me to list them all, but these are like the leaves for dogs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. The common ones are carprofen, which goes by Rimadyl. Um, we have meloxicam, which is Medicam. We have Deramax. Uh, we have uh, Prevacox, we have Galaprand. So we have a lot of these non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and you can risk stomach ulceration if you use them together. So if your dog is diagnosed with lymphoma and was on a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, we're gonna get them off that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. We usually give them a couple day washout period before they go back, they can start their steroids and vice versa. So you again, you never wanna have them on uh, more than one non-steroidal at the same time, and you never want a dog on prednisone steroids with a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. The other thing that steroids can do is they can cause um, diabetes to kind of get messed up. They make the insulin resistant, uh, and so they can. it's not uncommon for dogs that if they have to go on oral steroids for something or any type of steroid, it will mess up their diabetes uh, mellitus. So that's something that you'll want to talk to your internist about and your oncologist about keeping that managed. So that wraps up steroids and cancer. Thanks so much for watching. We went over the common uses of steroids, the side effects, things that you should be looking for, and the common cancers that we use it, with the most common one being lymphoma. Don't forget to check out the playlist that I have so you'll find all of my videos. I have playlists for dog lymphoma and cat lymphoma. Remember, those are the common cancers that we use steroids for. And if you're curious or interested in learning more about chemotherapy, I have a separate playlist all about chemo. What does it entail? Side effects, home safety with chemotherapy. There'll be a part two where I am gonna answer some of your questions that you asked me about steroids and cancer. So come on back for that. Leave your comments. Don't forget to subscribe, share this. Thanks so much for watching. I'm here to help you get through this difficult time and I look forward to seeing you at the next video.